You can see that, not surprising, not surprising at all, right? That three years ago, that happened, right? It's just obviously that, wow, that is something all right. Wow, that that is something all right. Guys, this graph looks, what did I, bruh. <laughs> That's a rarity. That right there, what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> wow. Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another viewer requested fundamental analysis video. This time, guys, with Facecam. A lot of you guys have said you liked it, so I guess we'll just make this a thing. It actually isn't even that difficult to to edit either plus you guys get to see my genuine reaction when it comes to this so let's actually spin the wheel guys let's spin the wheel to see what company we should analyze well from one of your guys recommendations we really don't have a lot happening right now so we're just sitting and waiting until q3 starts and we get earnings so may as well just do one of your guys recommendations so let's spin the wheel and see what company you should analyze using this kind of free cash flow And we got the company, guys, GMAB. Now, GMAB was brought up by none other than Lord Baron DK. So let's check out this company, guys, We're using a discounted free cash flow approach. Of course, taking a look at their fundamentals, too, to see if the current share price, this is looking like a buy. So with the set, let's get started with this analysis. And here we have the company, guys, Genmad, which is actually a really interesting company. It it's from Denmark, and I believe that uh, Lord Baron DK, the three that he gave me were from Denmark. So that's going to be pretty interesting when, when I have to do those. But um, yeah, guys, this one's actually very, very interesting because, well, uh, they apparently are a leading international biotechnology company. Really, really nice. So again, I've never heard of them before, so this will be the first time that's happening. So let's jump into their company profile. So as you can see right here, company... Gen, Genmab A slash S, which this is the way that it's found in Seeking Alpha, develops antibody therapeutics for the treatment of cancer and other diseases, primarily in de in Denmark. Right. The company markets. Da oh, oh dear lord, Darzalex, a human monoclonal antibody for the treatment of patients with mul multiple myeloma. All right. To, oh my god. To tepro to oh my god. Tepro to mumab for the treatment of thyroid eye disease, and then a bunch of other ones. So, okay, great. They're a pharmaceutical company that's a biotech. So that's really, really cool. Like, biotechnology companies are really, really awesome. And actually, something to know here, guys, 1999 with almost 2,000 employees. That's actually, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. So, nonetheless, though, biotechnology companies are really, really awesome, just in general, right? The fact that they're, like, innovating all these, like, crazy things, you know, uh, antibody therapeutics for cancer treatments and, and other types of stuff, that's really, really awesome. So, let's actually see, well, what their earnings were this past quarter. And if we come over here, we can see that their earnings was on May 10th. EPS normalized actual came in at 5 cents, missed by 11 cents. EPS gap actual 5 cents, missed by 11. Revenue of $421 million, to be exact, 420. Nice. And uh, revenue was a beat by $5.63 million. All right, not too shabby. Now, they did miss on the EPS, but they did beat on earnings overall. So now let's come into the discounted free cash release, the calculator we got the ticker for gmab market cap of 25.7 billion dollars with a pe of na now i'm not fully certain if that pe is na because of the earning it shouldn't be um i don't necessarily know what that is maybe that will get fixed by the time we're done with the video but nonetheless though with a current share price of 38 dollars and 77 cents looking at this graph guys on the one year they're up a whopping 44.5 percent dear lord year to date they're down 9.9%. You can see here that the 52-week range is $29.41 to $47.50. So we're smack in the middle, right? We're smack in the middle of this thing. And as of Friday, they were they were essentially flat, right? They only went up 2 cents, 0.05%. Let's come back into the calculator. They don't pay out a dividend, which means all of this cash flow is going straight into themselves. And you can see that the five-year average, it is $431.46 million. As of the last year's free cash flow, it is 
517.6. So that's exactly what you want to see. You want to see the last year's free cash flow to be a lot higher than that of the five year average. They really are increasing their cash flow. However, we need to take a look at these graphs because this could just be an outlier year. So let's take a look at their fundamentals, starting, of course, with an income we got five years ago of $225.9 million to one year ago of $795 million. That's an increase of 252% on the five year. You can see that, not surprising, not surprising at all, right, that three years ago, that happened, right? It's just obviously COVID hit. They make they make monte, uh, what was it called? monoclonal antibodies. That was a huge, huge thing. Um, I forgot. Oh my, what was the company? I, I forgot the company that made that. But there was a company here in the United States that made um, um, monoclonal antibodies. I forgot. I forgot what the name was though. And um, not surprising that because they kind of do similar things. Granted, for cancer, but they kind of do similar things. Their stock, oh, their net income went up massively three years ago. But then look at what happened, guys. As of two years ago, they came back down pretty much in line with that of the five and four year ago numbers too. But as of one year ago, they just shot up massively once again to 795. So, I this is this is a difficult one. So I would actually put this if I had to give it a number. I would actually have to put this, I would say at around like a 50%, mainly because I have no idea where this is going. I really have no idea where this is going. Obviously, the trend should be, you know, the five, four, and two year ago value, but as of one year ago, they made what they, well, they actually surpassed what they did three years ago. So I'm just like, I don't know what they could do this year. They could go back down a little bit higher to that of the two year ago value, but I just don't know. So I'm gonna go with a 50%. Looking now into the free cash flow, let's see if there's any outliers when it comes to this. And um, well, the outlier is essentially the three year ago value, which I just explained why that is, right? We got five years ago of 144.7 million to one year ago of 517.6 million, increase of 258% with an average of $431.5 million. Now you can see here that five, four, three and even one year ago fairly consistently increasing right the two year ago to one year ago is a little bit of a jump but aside from that it's actually not too bad now the outlier here is once again covid but you know it's it was covid i'm not gonna really blame them for it all in all this one isn't looking too bad i'm gonna give this i would say at around like a 75 percent Looking now into the revenue, we got five years ago of $464.2 million to one year ago of, wow, $2.1 billion, guys. Increase of 352.67%. And actually, the outlier year here wasn't even three years ago, right? Well, I mean, it was, but you can see something similar to that of the net income, right? You got four years ago and then to three years ago, a massive jump, COVID, obviously. And they came back down to around $1.3 billion two years ago, and then they shot up massively as of one year ago. So yeah, I don't know where this is going either. I'm going to have to say... Mm, I don't know. I'm going to have to... I'm going to give this thing a little bit higher than that of the net income. I would say around like a... No, I'm gonna give it the, the same as the net income. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a 50%. Looking now at the assets minus the liabilities. That, wow, that is something all right. Wow, that, that is something all right. Guys, this graph looks amazing, right? It looks really, really good. Consistently increasing. And uh, yeah, even as of today, they're already beating that of one year ago. Now, again, a little bit of an outlier here. Actually, the outlier was from like 5-4 and then from 3-2. So, oh, sorry, from 5-4 and then from 4-3. So, yeah, this is just, yeah, it's consistently increasing. A little bit of outliers here, though, but overall, it's still looking really good. Average total assets is $3.7 billion. Average liabilities it is $350 million, roughly. And doing this difference, we get $3.31 billion. I'm going to give this... I'm going to give this, I would say, like an 80%. It's looking really, really good overall, all right? So, you know, a little bit of outliers here and there, but honestly, it really isn't looking too bad. Looking now at the cash flow minus the lab. What did I... Bruh. <laughs> that... That's a rarity. That right there, what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> wow. All right. Um. Yeah. Guys, we got numbers in the positive of cash flow minus liabilities. That is a rarity. I rarely get to see that. 
Wow, look at that, guys. Three years ago is obvious because of the fact, you know, COVID. But even one year ago, look at this. It's in the positive by $109.2 million and positive five and four years ago, too. That's crazy. So the only bad year here was two years ago. But honestly, that's not that's amazing. The average is in the positive. The average is 162.4 million. OK, I'm giving this a 100 percent. The fact that we got that many positives on that, that's really, really good. It's such a rarity to see that. And lastly, when it comes to the shares of standing, however, I really wish this one was a little bit better. Yeah, it's not looking too good, guys. We got five years ago of 61.5 million shares to today of 65.2 million shares. That is an increase, unfortunately, of 6.02%. 6.02% five years, it's not really the lot. Majority of this, but actually, it's interesting because, huh, it's actually interesting. Now, now look at this again. Even though it is an increase, guys, of 6.02% on the five-year, majority of this was done from five to four years ago. And take a look at this. From three, two, to one year ago, to essentially today, though today they have actually bought back a 0.31%, guys. Nonetheless, though, from, from essentially, what, three, two, and one year ago, they kept it the same. So I... I'm going to go to give this. I'm actually going to give this. I would say, I'm not, I'm actually going to give this guys. Believe it or not, an, a 90 percent, a 90 percent. Here's the reason why. Okay, they kept it the same from three, two, and one year ago. And as of recently, they bought back a little bit, but the majority of the issuing of shares occurred five to four years ago. That's a long time ago, guys. And the fact that they haven't done anything that major since. Okay, sure they increased it from four to three, but they haven't made, you know, 61.5 to 64.9. They haven't made that at all in the past several years, you know, aside from that one jump. So that's why I'm giving it a 90%. And lastly, when it comes to the cash and clearance, they currently hold almost $1.8 billion with an average of $1.1 billion. When looking at the overall grade, wow, that is on the dot. Gotta love it. We got the net income at 50%, free cash flow 75%, revenue 50%, assets minus liabilities 80%. Cash flow minus liabilities 100%. Sales standing of 90%. Guys, overall grade of 70. This is right on the dot, right? Right on the dot. Like right. The, my main issue with this company is that, well, for starters, they're in Denmark. I don't know much about, you know, Danish government. I don't know their regulations. I don't know any of that. So that right there is a major red flag, right? That's huge, one huge red flag for me. So I don't necessarily know where to actually put this obviously just based on numbers it's looking fairly decent now here's the question what price should we pay for this and uh that could make it or break it for me now if we take a look at the discounted free cash flow all right <laughs> this thing is just 282 dollars not adjusting for debt and then adjusting for debt 591 dollars guys um yeah, that's a little bit of a problem because I I don't know. And this is a case that because I don't know, I am not comfortable using. And, and by I mean, what I mean by I don't know is, you know, I don't know what the company, you know, they're, they're not an American company, right? I know U.S. companies a lot more than Danish companies because I know U.S. law more. Obviously, I live in the United States uh, than Danish ones. So I don't know. By the looks of this. Obviously, whatever number I put here, if, if, if it's in the positive, even if it's in the negatives, honestly, it might still be a lot more than the $38.77. So, yeah. Uh, with that said, I would actually prefer in this scenario to use the book value and tangible book value per share. So let's do that. Let's come over here and take a look at book value and tangible book value per share for this company. And of course, doing this, guys, we can see that as of today, we see that they should be worth $60.69 for the book value. Okay, so that's about double than what they are right now. If we look at now the tangible book value, they're pretty much the same, right? $60.39. So by all means, this is looking like the kind of company that today should actually be worth, actually is actually worth buying. Um, obviously, just based on the book value and tangible book value, right? But 
Yeah, I mean, this country castle is telling me this. I have a feeling that the reason why it's doing this is because if we take a look at the shares outstanding again, we could see that, uh, well, they just have really, really little shares, right? So you take the market cap, you divide it by the current shares outstanding. If it's only 65.2 million shares, again, compare that to some companies out there here in the United States that are in the billions of shares, right? Yeah, I mean, you're going to get a massive number. So that might be the reason why, but... All in all, you know, fundamentals are looking really good. Their cash flow exceeds. That by far was like this right here. This right here but by far got me. The fact that their cash flow exceeds their liabilities most of the time, that's a that's a tremendous feat. So better than there, I'm actually really liking this company for its fundamentals. I just don't necessarily know what to put the price at, right? I just don't necessarily know what, what to put the price at, but book value is telling me around sixty dollars and the current price is thirty eight dollars so this is actually not looking like a bad company to buy right now obviously guys this is not financial advice every investment is the present value of all future cash flow you guys can finally see me actually say that now and you know this is why i give out all these calculators out for free so please use them if you have any doubt use book value right um if you just and, and this is just me if I find it that's just way too difficult to understand, I just move on to, to another company. I, I'm not, I'm not going to waste my time. But if you do like this company, um, if you get similar grades for the fundamentals, which, by the way, all of this is available for free, too. Uh, you know, the, the graphs, uh, you guys can input all the numbers. Uh, if you like it, then by all means, you make that decision for yourself. My calculators are only here to help everybody else out, to help all of you guys out, uh, to make that decision for yourself. So financial advice obviously and the best way that you guys can help us is by of course liking subscribing commenting it really does help here with the algorithm on youtube guys thank you so much thank you so much for everybody sub subscribing you guys have no idea um uh, how much <laughs> you guys have no idea <sighs> 2600 subscribers guys the goal is 3k by the end of the year can we do it i have a feeling we can we just need less than 400 now but Again, if you guys like the kind of content we make, I make the fundamental side, Mike does the technical analysis side, we cover the market updates at the end of the week, we do live streams when when there's like major news like CPI and, and that kind of stuff, right? So if you do enjoy this kind of content, and, and, and now look, I'm adding a face cam for you guys as well because I, you know, I, I want to give the human, like KLL said the best, it gives it the human aspect of it. So yeah. Um, I'm more than happy to do it if you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much. And the best way that you guys can help us it is by, of course, liking, subscribing, commenting. Of course, word of mouth sharing. Thank you so much for everybody's help so far. If you are doing that, we really, really do appreciate it. The goal is to make this thing a company one day, similar to like a Tim Pool kind of style. You know, make a, make a, a daily live stream, go over news. That'd be awesome. So if you guys would like to see that in the future... It starts with the first step, and that is by, of course, liking, subscribing, commenting, and, of course, sharing. And now taking a look at the overall strikes for the options chains. Actually, there really isn't much here. There really isn't much here. Not really surprising, though. You can see here that the July 21st ones, there's nothing for the bids on the put. There's one for the strike on the bid side for about $30 for a strike of 40 That's really about it. For August 18th, Let's see over here, nothing on the bids and only two for the call side at 40, uh, well, at, at the 40 strike for $40 and the 45 strike for $25. So yeah, it's a foreign company. Not really surprising that there really isn't much of anything. So it is what it is. Nonetheless, though, that's essentially the options change for this company. All in all, thank you so much for the recommendation. Really, really do appreciate it. And congratulations on being the first, congratulations <laughs> on being the first uh, recommendation that I did for the fundamental analysis using face cam. So congratulations on that one. Um, and yeah, it's it, it, honestly, the company has a lot of potential. I just don't know a lot about it. If you know a lot about it, then please tell me in the comment section below. So that pretty much does it for this one, everybody. Y'all can follow us on the new tech sites. Link is in the description below. So with that said, peace out, and we'll see you all next time.